cut. It was the final piece of the puzzle for the huge waterfront park project in downtown San Diego, the October opening of a 10-story parking garage in Little Italy. R, R, R. So oh, no, up a little bit. <laughs> and while the structure is a cube of monotone concrete and metal, a huge splash of color adorns the entrance. It's the latest art project by San Diego's own David Aidey, and it all began appropriately in another parking lot eight months earlier. The guy here said there was a, a prison inmate carrier that we've got to get that. Yeah. Aidey is also an art professor at Point Loma Nazarene University, and at this kickoff event, students joined him to collect clay imprints of tire treads that would mark the first few hundred of what would become thousands of individual impressions. The fact that each one is handmade um, and it's, you know, with by myself and, and my students, um, it, it gives it a, a very overall handmade feel, which I think is important to the concept of the piece, because it really is sort of about individuality, but also this homogeneity, you know, the fact that we are all indeed individuals, but yet we go through the same ritual every day of getting in our cars and going to our place of work and then dispersing back out to our homes again. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that. That's, that's a new one. That's a new combo we just did. Five months later, at his studio on campus, AD was busy with a new tool in his artistic toolbox, the kiln. I'm just trying to use the, the kiln as efficiently as possible, and so I really pack it full to get, uh, I think the record, I got 200 tiles in a firing was the record. After that first collection event, AD and his assistants had been busy gathering more clay impressions every Friday about two to three hundred at a time. We did a little bit of everything. We did some, we did motorcycles, we did scooters, did a couple bikes. One of the groundskeeping guys let me into their uh, equipment shed. And so I got all the lawn mowers and tractors and all that stuff. We did just about any tire we could find. Until he ended up with about 3,300 tiles. Now it was time to fire each one in a kiln so that the tiles would withstand the harsh environments that can exist for outdoor public art. The tiles first went through a bisque firing to harden the clay. Riley and Lucas are, are cleaning and glazing at this point. This is a bisque tile and what Lucas is doing is, is cleaning off the ash so the glaze adheres better. The glazing, which involves painting a color on the tile and another session in the kiln, became a lot more complex than AD anticipated. There are actually very few glazed tiles that only have one glaze, um, which w originally is what I had envisioned. You know, being a novice ceramicist, you know, I thought, oh, I would just buy a bunch of glazes and, and paint them and throw them in the kiln. Instead, the range of colors and combinations that AD experimented with became so large that a makeshift cataloging system had to be constructed. So this is the sample wall, and we've got up here, this is just the, with this particular line of glazes, there, this is, these are opaque glazes or, or semi-opaque glazes, and this is just the straight color up along the top. So that's just a, you know, a couple of coats of just the straight color. And then down below that, each one is a variety of combinations of color. This is unfired. When a tile came out in the color he liked, AD would make more or make variations on that color, all the time thinking of how they would play off each other in the final arrangement. We've glazed about a little over 2,000 at this point. I have about 1,000 left to go. So I'm trying to determine what color ranges I, I need more of. So I need some more pinks, I need some more yellows. Um, we're, we're doing pretty well on greens. As with any large piece of art, especially so, delicate uh, art with thousands of pieces yeah. going on a building still under construction, logistics is a huge part of the project. The construction site had a mock-up of one of the concrete frames that would house the art, and AD was coordinating frequently with the project managers. But by the end of July, AD was relishing a point in the project when artistic decisions were again dominating his workday. When all the reds are together like this, you can see the subtleties of the differences of color better than when it's just all random. And then the density also feathers out as it, as it moves down the plane. AD was laying out his canvas of color into four wooden boxes cut to the exact dimensions of the garage walls. And along with arrangement decisions, he was also figuring out how to put the tiles together in a way that would allow them to be accurately transferred from box to wall. Spent about a week and a half on this one. And now this one's almost ready to go. It's all glued up and in sections like this one. Here's a section here. A week before the opening of the garage, it was time to deliver the art to the construction site. 
and David Aidy was nervous. Two. So many different chapters to this thing, um, and now to, to get it to this point is exciting, but, but you know, all, all of that work is on a truck uh, rolling, rolling through town. All right, I'm there. Okay. This is a, uh, it's a very active construction site. They've got a deadline of next Friday. So they've been pouring concrete at our heels. They've been, you know, just today they were they craned over the, this big transformer here. It's a tense site right now. A lot, a lot going on. The art was now handed over to the tile subcontractors who would take 80's boxed creation and carefully transfer it piece by piece to its final spot. All 80 could do was watch and supervise, but for the first time, he was able to see the art in its intended orientation, vertically placed on the garage wall. After the ribbon cutting, David A.D. finally had a chance to step back and absorb the piece as a whole. I've got the density here, you know, this side is the, the dense section, both um, in color and in texture. Got three or four layers deep here, three or four layers deep here, and then these intense bursts of color of red and orange, and then green and purple, so I'm dealing with complementary colors. So the energy, there's this shift in the wall, and then the energy really pushes away. And, and so I'm, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. For the thousands of people who will walk past the work, he hopes the art will continue to draw interest. The county workers in particular are going to be passing by this piece every day, and many of the people that are waiting for the trolley probably do this route pretty regularly. So you, know, you hope over time it kind of percolates and, and they just maybe aesthetically they find something new, you know, a little, a little area or a little moment or something that, that was kind of surprising or, or a color that was interesting to them and they can just stare at it for a while while they're waiting for the trolley. And believe it or not, AD still remembers where a lot of the impressions came from. I know that one was from a lawnmower. Um, this one was from a bike. And that one was from another piece of yard equipment. You'll have to guess the rest. In the County News Center, I'm Dominic Fulgoni.